Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. This is Keith once again, and today we are talking NVIDIA at CES 2019. They kicked things off with a bang on Sunday night with their keynote where they announced the RTX 2060 and announced that their board partners would have quite a few versions of those available. Another thing they announced was their Max-Q variants and full-blown desktop variants of these RTX lineup in mobile solutions. We actually took a look earlier. You can hit a link up in the description, down in the description, up in the card, to where we took a look at the Razer Blade 15 with the RTX 2080 Max-Q design and found it to be rather capable. Another big innovation coming from NVIDIA is the ability to use a GeForce in workstation environments, such as Red Cinema and using Autodesk Maya, showing the RT Core advantage of the RTX 20 series in those applications. Really cool stuff to see some of those functions coming from something other than a Quadro line. So kudos on that one, much welcomed by the industry. Another thing they did announce though is that the BFGDs are finally going up for pre-order launching here in a couple of months from various vendors. One they had on display at their suite was the HP Omen Imperium 65. Pre-orders again are open, shipping mid-February for a price tag of around five grand if you've got the cheese to play with that one. Now let's get to the biggest announcement from NVIDIA, the thing that caused the most feathers to ruffle, the most ears to perk up, and well, somebody had to pick me up out of the floor when they actually announced this. We are talking about adaptive sync support for GeForce GTX cards. Now this is in addition to their G-Sync technology, which is gonna now be branded as G-Sync Ultimate. So you're gonna see the, all of the benefits that G-Sync has brought in the past to its customers, but now they've decided to expand with a market of, well, around 600 or better monitors, as they mentioned in their keynote, that support adaptive sync. But it's not all sunshines and roses on that front because some of the monitors, well, quite frankly, a vast majority, couldn't quite pass validation for the G-Sync certified version of G-Sync. So they, you now have uh, G-Sync Ultimate and G-Sync Certified. Now, that's not to say that if your monitor didn't make the list of 12 different panels so far to be G-Sync Certified that you're out in the cold, because you're not. You're still going to be able to use it. You're going to have to go into the control panel under the G the GeForce G-Sync option and you'll have to enable it manually and it's going to give you a warning but that's okay because you still have the option to do it. Now what about, what, what does it take to be G-Sync certified? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. It was one of the questions that we had immediately walking into the G-Sync booth at the NVIDIA suite. So let me go through the four major characteristics that the monitor must display in order to reach G-Sync certification. First thing is, it has to have a refresh rate of 2.4x to 1 so that it can do proper frame doubling on the bottom end. This is something that the G-Sync module is able to do in the module, so they have to have a bit of a different window, a much wider one, for it to be able to handle it on the driver's side with the GPU. Second off, FreeSync must be enabled out of the box. If any of you guys out there with an adaptive sync or free sync panel have bought one, sometimes you have to go into the options in the OSD and enable it by default. So to be G-Sync certified, this has to be enabled by default. Moving on to number three, it has to transition smoothly in and out of the free sync range. So if it's, we'll use for example, 48 Hertz on the low end and 120 Hertz on the high end, if you cross the 120 FPS mark, it should go smoothly and not have a jarring experience. If you have a jarring experience, it's not gonna pass certification. And fourth and last but not least, no flickering, no blinking, no overdrive, ghosting, which is a little different than ghosting, so overdrive, it can cause like the whites and the blacks to bleed over. That can't be present. Those are things that, well, the flickering, I don't know who can play with that, but the other one with the ghosting, I could see people being able to be, well, okay with that one because you're gonna have to be something you're sensitive to. If you're not sensitive to it, you may never notice it. So I at least have to give them credit for enabling it for everyone to try it. Now, when I say everyone, that's not necessarily everyone. One of the questions that I did have was, what graphics cards is this gonna be supported on? How far back does the support go? And there were concerns that this would be an RTX 20 series exclusive feature 
but I'm happy to say that it's not. So the RTX cards support it and the Pascal GTX cards support it. Notice I said GTX. You're gonna need a GTX 1050 or higher to get this benefit. So you might ask yourself, what's left for FreeSync? Because if these issues that G-Sync won't, well, NVIDIA found that won't let it be G-Sync certified, do they still exist on Radeon cards? According to NVIDIA, they do, but it's gonna be up to you to, well, see if you like that or not. One thing AMD does still have though is HD, FreeSync over HDMI. That is not supported in this program. So no G-Sync or variable refresh rate over HDMI to these monitors. So something to keep in mind if your panel is HDMI only. So another thing they touched on is the RTX, well, the RTX feature suite. And they did show the new Port Royale, a benchmark for ray chasing with DLSS enabled. And I have to say, sitting next to TAA and DLSS, it's a visual difference. You can definitely tell the difference. Now, I wanna hold you up right there right quick because I keep seeing a lot of comments about why they use TAA as the anti-aliasing of choice versus DLSS. There's been a lot of complaints about that. Well, I did ask them and the answer they gave me made a little bit of sense in the sense that TAA, according to NVIDIA, is one of the most common anti-aliasing versions available across the most amount of games so that it get, and, and it's not a very expensive AA. So if they had used something like MSAA, that would have been a huge performance impact, which would have artificially boosted the variance between the one version to the DLSS version. So they'd get that clarifi clarified and the actual resolution that's being rendered is gonna be around 66% according to NVIDIA, but the final image is, well, it kind of speaks for itself, even though you're not gonna be able to see it in this video. It was pretty impressive where I could see it in action in several of the games that they were benchmarking. And all of the demos that they were running, except for the Port Royale one, were all running on the RTX 2060, showing that capable of running RTX. Now, I haven't gotten my RTX 2060 yet, so hopefully it's sitting back at the office whenever I get home so I can get started on testing with that. So let us know what you have to say in the comment section below about NVIDIA showing at this year's CES. We'd love to hear what you have to say. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so I won't miss you in the next one.